Welcome to the Low Boo Cantina, Bar and Casino on the planet Abrogado Rey. A spot for drinking, spice smoking, dancing, and all the gambling and hollow chess your heart can take. One attraction you may be tempted by are the sabak tables. It's a classic pastime of spacers, soldiers, and gamblers from across the galaxy. So sabak, you might have heard about this game in some form of Star Wars lore. It's a sort of mix between poker and blackjack. In Empire Strikes Back, when it's mentioned that Lando lost the Falcon to Han. What have you done to my ship? Your ship? Hey, remember you lost her to me fair and square. It's never mentioned what the bet was or what game they were playing until 1983 in the expanded universe novel Lando Calrissian and the Mind Harp of Sharu. It's in this book where the name Sabak originated. Originally created by a superstitious gypsy race called the Rin, Sabak cards had imagery and names inspired by real tarot cards. And then at some point, they were repurposed into a card game that spread across the galaxy like wildfire. Sabak game cards are traditionally electronic. They can change during certain phases of the game and can be shuffled without the need to physically draw new cards. People who play Sabak without electronic cards usually roll chance cubes to see if any of their cards change during the shifting phase. We'll talk about shifting in a minute. Electronic cards make it harder to cheat without special cards called skifters, replacement cards that can be altered to any card or suit. There was also the rarer cheater chip, which had the same effect but could be done remotely. Sabak cheater chips were also used by rebels on captured Imperial Stormtrooper helmets. These chips could be jury-rigged into the helmets to tune into Imperial channels. Even though all the information would come out as Sabak information, that could be translated into readable data. Some casinos also have automatic dealers, sometimes called card sharks. These droids deal and collect cards, shuffle hands remotely, and send out the electronic pulses that randomly shift cards. And some have extra claws and retractable force pikes to deal with unruly players or cheaters. One stun from a force pike can put a Wookiee down instantly. So how do you play Sabacc, and how exactly did Lando lose the Falcon to Han in this game? As far as rules go, there are fan interpretations of the game, and there's even a Disney version of the game from Galaxy's Edge, which is slightly different. But some Legends material does go into detail on how to play classic Sabacc. An official deck was printed in 1989 that came with Crisis on Cloud City, a supplement rulebook for the West End Games tabletop RPG. This book was one of few sources that actually gave rules to Sabak. And even though some of these books have some differences between each other, I've done my best to condense them into a universal rule set, and I'll mention any optional rules or variants as we go along. A Sabak deck consists of 76 cards. 60 numbered cards, ranging from numbers 1 to 15, split into 4 suits, coins, flasks, sabers, and staves, and numbers 12 through 15 have special names, Commander, Mistress, Master, and Ace. And then there are two copies each of the 8 face cards, which are all negative numbers or zero. The goal of the game is to get as close to 23 as possible without going over. Hands are played until a player achieves one of the two winning hands, a 23, also known as a pure sabak, or an idiot's array, consisting of the idiot card, worth zero, and a two and a three of the same suit, literally laid out as 23. An idiot's array beats a pure sabak. Once a player gets one of these game-winning hands, the game is over, and the winner gets the current hand pot as well as the separate sabak pot. Every time the player makes bets in Sabak, they put the same amount into the Sabak pot as they do in the hand pot, and it grows over the course of the whole game. And some situations may cause players to pay penalties into the Sabak pot. If someone goes over 23, under negative 23, or has exactly zero, they bomb out, paying a penalty into the Sabak pot equal to the current hand pot. And some variants of Sabak, exactly negative 23 is also a bomb out. In some other variants, a negative 23 counts as a third winning hand, a negative pure sabak that's weaker than a positive pure sabak. Also in some variants of sabak, negative hands could beat positive hands if they are closer to negative 23 than the other was to positive 23. For example, a negative 16 would beat a positive 15 because it's closer to negative 23 than 15 is to positive 23. A positive number beats a negative number in case of a tie. If two or more players have the exact same score in hand, they go to a sudden demise, which is when each player is dealt one additional card, and the best modified hand takes the pot. 
If it's still a tie after that, the pot is usually split, but in some variations, Sudden Demise repeats until there's a winner. Another major aspect of Sabak is shifting. During certain phases of the round, every card in every player's hand has a random chance to change to another card in the deck. From what I've seen in the rules I've read, it seems like every card has a 20% chance to shift during any shifting phase. Players can mitigate shifting by placing one card face down in an interference field, preventing it from shifting. In some variants, players can put multiple cards face down in the interference field. Alright, so here's what a round of Sabak looks like. First off is the betting phase. A round starts with players paying an ante into both the hand and Sabak pot. If a player ran out of credits from the last round and can't pay the ante, they're out of the game. But some casinos let anyone buy back into the game until somebody's won the Sabak pot. Then each player is dealt two cards, starting with the player left of the dealer, and then they go around and make bets. The only time a player can fold their hand is during this betting phase, and if they do so, they have to pay a penalty into the Sabak pot equal to the current hand pot. However, at any point during Sabak, a player can totally fold from the game, keeping all their earnings but losing a chance at the Sabak pot. After bets are called, the first wave of card shifting is sent out, potentially randomizing players' cards. Then comes the calling phase, where each player takes turns raising bets and they also have the option to ask other players if they want to call the hand early, revealing hands before any cards are drawn. A player can't call the game on their own turn. If the hand is called early, another shift happens and then everyone reveals their hands, prematurely ending the round. If the person who called the hand doesn't win, they pay a penalty into the Sabak pot. So assuming nobody calls the game early, the game moves on to the drawing phase. Starting from the left of the dealer, players have the option to draw as many cards as they want. If they draw at least one card, they can discard one card. Players must always have at least two cards in their hand, and there's no maximum hand size. After each player has drawn their cards, another shift is sent out. And then the final betting phase starts. Once players are finished betting and calling each other, the cards can shift one last time and then hands are revealed. And then if anyone has a pure Sabak or an Idiot's Array, the game is over, and the winner gets the Hand Pot and Sabak Pot. If nobody has a winning hand, the one closest to 23 wins the Hand Pot and another round starts. And that's Sabak. Lando may have lost the Falcon to Han in a game of Sabak, but he was no amateur. He was actually a professional gambler. He won the Cloud City Sabak tournament five years before the Battle of Yavin. It was in the finals of this tournament where he himself won the Millennium Falcon from a pilot named Six Truve. When Lando won the Falcon, he took it for a spin and learned the ins and outs of it with his new friend Han Solo. Han was no noob in Sabak either. He was a less technical player who always seemed to have luck on his side and he once won a 500,000 credit uranium mine in a game of Sabak. And then he eventually came to own a 2 million credit mine. But he had to abandon them both because they were apparently illegitimate. I think it's pretty funny how Han had a weird time in his life where he owned illegal uranium mines. So two and a half years after Lando won the Falcon, they both re-entered the Cloud City Sabak tournament together. As Lando skillfully tore through the bracket, Han barely scraped by with tons of lucky hands. Everyone was convinced he was cheating. Then it came to the final game where it was Han, Lando, and three others. When it came to the drawing phase, Han drew his third and fourth cards and had a terrible hand, which eventually shifted into a pure Sabak. The Master of Coins for 14, the Queen of Air and Darkness for negative two, the Five of Coins, and the Six of Staves. At some point, the three other contenders folded, and then it was Lando's turn to draw. Lando drew a card and then put one card face down in the interference field to not be changed. Han caught a glimpse of that card. It was the idiot. And maybe Lando intended Han to see it to make him think he might have an idiot's array. That's when Lando raised the stakes on the game, offering up any ship on his lot back on Nar Shadda. So Han, realizing he still had a pierce of Bach, but Lando possibly had an idiot's array, also remembered that Lando took a luxury ship to Cloud City leaving the Millennium Falcon on that lot on Nar Shadda. So Han called the bet and it was time to reveal hands. Lando had the Idiot, a Two of Staves, and a Seven of Flasks. A score of nine and no Idiot's Array. And none of the cards in Han's hand changed and he laid out a pure Sabak, winning the tournament. Lando was graceful in defeat until Han told him that he was choosing the Millennium Falcon off his lot. 
That's when Lando became furious, forgetting that the Millennium Falcon was on the Nar Shadda lot. And he gave it up, but unfortunately, their friendship broke apart after that. At least until Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> How you doing, you old pirate? So good to see you! I never thought I'd catch you <laughs> Before ending the video, I think it's worth mentioning Pazak, the minigame from KOTOR that's supposed to be the predecessor for Sabak. Pazak is almost exactly blackjack. You're trying to get to as close to 20 as possible, with 4 cards drawn from a deck of 10 that you make before the game. You can also flip the values of cards to give plus or minuses to your value. Whoever wins 3 rounds wins the game. I'm going to end the video with an excerpt from one of my favorite Star Wars Legends books, Darth Bane, Path of Destruction. The card shark kept dealing, and the players kept betting. Dez's stack of chips was growing steadily larger, and the Sabak pot kept on growing. 3,000 credits, 4,000, 5. Through hand after agonizing hand, players continued to come and go. One by one, the soldiers gave up their seats, forced out when they ran out of chips and couldn't afford more. Of the original group, only Dez and the Ensign remained. After another hour, the Sabak Pot hit 10,000 chips, the maximum limit. With the Sabak Pot capped, all the antes and penalties went straight to Oro. He'd have to work a month of grueling shifts in the mines if he ever wanted to see any of those credits again. The card shark fired out another hand. He pushed his chips in with a weak hand, defying every instinct that told him to fold. The marker flickered and the card shifted. Dez didn't bother to look. He simply flipped over his cards and muttered, coming up. He was sitting at negative 23 exactly. A bomb out. Whoa, big fella. You must be lump soaked to come up on that. What the bricks were you thinking? Maybe he doesn't understand the difference between plus 23 and minus 23. You don't talk so much when you're losing, huh? Hate. Dez didn't feel anything else at first. Pure, white-hot hatred consumed every thought, every motion, and every ounce of reason in his brain. Suddenly, he didn't care about the pot. All he wanted was to wipe the smug expression from the ensign's face and there was only one way he could do it. Dez swiped his Oro account card into the reader and rang up another buy-in, ignoring the logical part of his mind that tried to talk him out of it. Dez opened with the Ace and Two of Sabres. He was at 17, a dangerous hand. Lots of potential to go too high on his next card and bomb out. Acting on an impulse he couldn't even explain, Dez moved his two into the interference field, then pushed his chips into the pot. He was letting his emotions guide him, but he no longer cared. And when the next card came up as a three, he knew what he had to do. He shoved his three into the interference field beside the two that was already there. Then he bet the maximum wager and waited for the switch. Dez was two-thirds of the way there, an idiot's array. All he needed now was a switch to take his ten and replace it with the idiot. Of course, that meant there had to be a switch. And even then, he'd have to draw the idiot off it. And there were only two idiots in the entire 76-card deck. It was a ridiculously long shot. The cards shifted. He stared right into the ensign's eyes. Coming up. The Ensign looked down at his own hand to see what the switch had given him. <laughs> How do you like that one, boys? Idiots array on the switch! Dez whipped his hand out and snagged the young man's wrist in a grip as cold and hard as Durasteel, then flipped over his own cards. The Ensign's laughter died in his throat. Two idiots arrays in the same hand? The hand will be determined by a sudden demise. Now nobody's going to get that Sabak Pot! The Ensign was right. Neither of them would be collecting the Sabak Pot on this hand. You wouldn't get the Sabak Pot unless you scored 23 exactly. That, however, seemed impossible. 
There were no more idiots to deal out to preserve an idiot's array, and no single card had a value higher than the Ace's 15. Not that Dez cared. It was enough to have destroyed his opponent's will. He could feel the Ensign's hate, and he responded to it. It was like a living being. The dealer flicked out two cards face up for everyone to see. They were both nines. The droid had recalculated the hand, determined that the two players were still tied, and fired out another card to each of them. The Ensign took an eight, but Dez got another nine. Idiot two, three, nine, nine. Twenty-three. He reached out slowly and tapped his cards, whispering a single word to his opponent. Sabak. So there you have it. What a wonderful galaxy of Sabak we have here. I'd like to thank my patrons for making this video more possible than ever before. And thank you for watching, comment, share, like if you enjoyed it. And I'll see you guys next time with a Colt 45. The legend will never die.